This video shows how to set up the Hinkspix Pro version 1, 2, and 3, the version 2 shown here, with a regular home network. This implies that you will be making a connection from your controlling device, usually a PC or a tablet, to an access point typically over Wi-Fi, and then from that access point network switch or hub over to the controller. Now it's important to understand that the Wi-Fi interface on the Hinkspix Pro cannot be used to access the web interface for configuration. You must make a wired connection using one of these network ports to your local network. So let's go ahead and get started here. Right now this controller has been booted up and it is in its configuration that comes from the factory in which the DHCP address is auto assigned in the controller. Now we do not have a network connection hooked up right now and so the controller has chosen a default IP address of 10 10 10 10 and that's an address used whenever it cannot get an address from the network. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and plug in our network connection. This goes into our network switch on our network and we can plug it into either one of these. Now if you have an assembled controllers you may have a network port down here that you're plugging in into the bottom of the controller. Now, uh, it doesn't matter which one you plug it into, so go ahead and just plug it in, and you will see that the red or amber light here on the corner will light up. That is an indication that we do have a network connection back with your network switch, hub, router, access point, or whatever that may be. Now, that does not mean that the controller is configured. Now, in this particular case, it has already configured itself. And you can see from here, it has the address now of 10.0.0.107. And it obtained that address from the DHCP server on the network. So, let's go ahead and look at what that looks like. So, we'll go ahead, turn off this, and we'll simply just enter that address, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash and then the address that is shown on the screen. We'll press enter. Now your browser may show an error saying it is not a secure connection which it is not encrypted. That is not a problem. Go ahead and accept that. You can see now that we're on the controller we are set to the IP address that is shown here. Now some troubleshooting that you can also perform along the way it will be shown now. One is we can use the ping command. In this particular case, we're using the command prompt. You can open up the command prompt by going to start and typing the letter CMD, Charles Mary David, or just typing in command prompt. Now, a command prompt allows us to use the ping command, and we'll just troubleshoot this. So if we type ping 10.0.0.107 and press enter, you can see that this is responding just fine. I'll now run that command, but this time I will continuously ping it. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and disconnect the network connection right here from the controller. Now, what will happen is, is that the controller will not be responding to the ping command at the PC. We know for a fact at this point that this particular controller is the one that we are operating against. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in our network connection. Uh, again, we'll see here. And it's plugged in, it's linked up, and you can see that the reply is now coming back again. Now, this is also useful if we want to convert the address from DHCP to what's called static. Now, why would you do that? The reason is, is that a DHCP address is sometimes random. The controller, server, hub, router, switch, whatever is providing the address on your network may assign a different address each time the controller boots up. So if you turn it off for a day or so and then turn it back on, it may have a different address. And if you've got a show that's set up that way or that you want to have a known address, you may want to set it to be a static address. So the first thing to do is to make sure that we're not selecting a static address that's already assigned on the network. Now, this video is not going to cover the complexities of IP addressing. Either use AI or Google, and you can understand the differences in the way IP addressing and subnets work. But very simply, what we're going to do is we're going to just randomly pick an address. I'm going to use 10.0.0.244. 
I have just randomly picked that number and I'm going to ping that number. You can see that that address is not being used on my network. Now, this video is not implying that you should be able to always use that address. There could be something that is off right now that is using address, but for simplicity, we'll just assume that that is an open and unassigned address. So how can we use that address? Well, we simply go back to the controller, go to networking, go to wired, and we'll turn off the DHCP so that it will not attempt to get an address from the network. And then we'll use our address that we chose here, which was 244 is the last octet or last address. Now these numbers here should automatically have been pulled over from your local network and should be correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And I'm gonna come over here to reset and reset. So let's go ahead and see the controller booting up. Now it's important to understand, you can also set the static IP address using this button when the controller is booting up. We have a video that explains exactly how to do that. So if you're more experienced and you do need to set the static IP address before using a DHCP address, you absolutely can do that from the button interface without accessing the, the web interface. All right, so you can see the controller is now booted. We see the address here, 244. So let's go ahead and see if we can access it at that address. So I'm just gonna go back to my browser here, put in 244, and you can see now that we're able to access the interface again. This completes this particular setup. If your setup is going to be involving a direct PC to controller interface, we do have a separate video. See our Holiday Coro website, holidaycoro.com forward slash Hinkspix. And we'll be happy to show you that video on how to do that. Now, if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at www.holidaycoro.com forward slash contact us.